News at 4 begins now. Well, welcome to Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Tom Sherry. And I'm Jane McCarthy. Well, it seems we have a little more winter weather to <laughs> endure this week. Spoiler alert. We are bouncing back this weekend, so hang on to that <laughs> thought. First, though, Tom, another storm. I know, and we even have a winter storm warning in effect right now across the inland northwest. Uh, take a look at this. We'll show you everywhere shaded in kind of that pink. That's the winter storm warning. We expected the snow to begin after midnight tonight and then continue through early tomorrow afternoon. Four to six inches of snow possible in these areas that are shaded in pink. We have a winter weather advisory in effect for those areas that are shaded in yellow could see one to three inches of snow in those areas and also could even see some periods of freezing rain uh, in those areas shaded in yellow. So again, this is what we're thinking here in the Spokane area again uh, overnight and for tomorrow morning for your commute. It could be ugly uh, three to six inches of snow possible. I think the commute home will be OK. Uh, we'll look for temperatures to climb above freezing in the afternoon and see how it's mostly in a central and eastern Washington and northern Idaho event as you get closer to the east slopes of the Cascades. Just just looking for less than an inch of snow in those locations. So snow begins after uh, midnight tonight, an overnight low of 28 degrees, 37 the expected high tomorrow. Again, could see three to six inches of snow for the weekend though. And remember, it's a big weekend here in Spokane. St. Patrick's Day Parade is on Saturday. Looks like we'll see partly cloudy skies and warm into the mid 40s. And then Sunday is March 17th, St. Ah. Patrick's Day. And again, another beautiful day. It's the luck of the Irish there. Highs both days in the mid 40s. Very good. OK, so with all that snow Tom mm -hmm. just mentioned, be on the lookout now for crews out on the roads preparing for tomorrow's storm. Yeah, Washdot crews will be out today pre-treating the roads and they are asking drivers to be patient. Crews say that the pre-treating happens at speeds below 35 miles per hour, and that's even in zones where maybe it's 60 to 70 mile per hour speed limit. So it is important to give those de-icer trucks enough space. And of course, we thank them for making the road safer. Yes, indeed. In other news, Boeing is fielding a lot of questions and concern today. This comes after a second deadly crash with a Boeing 737 MAX 8 jet in just five months. Ethiopian Airlines has grounded the rest of its fleet of brand new jetliners after yesterday's crash that killed all 157 people on board, including eight Americans. Search crews recovered the black boxes from Ethiopian Flight 302 in a debris field near Ethiopia's capital. The new Boeing 737 MAX 8 jet was en route to Nairobi, Kenya, where some of the passengers were scheduled to attend a United Nations conference. I uh, would not be reluctant to get on a 737 MAX, but I assure you the manufacturer is terribly, uh, terribly concerned about this. Roughly 350 737 MAX jets are in service around the world now. Boeing has orders pending for nearly 5,000 more. The 737 MAX that crashed yesterday was delivered to Ethiopian Airlines in mid-November. The airline is one of Africa's leading carriers. TSA officials at the Spokane International Airport say more people are bringing loaded firearms to security checkpoints. Yeah, and that's against the law. Mark Hanrahan joins us from the newsroom with more on the story we're working on. Mark? Yes, good afternoon, guys. TSA is projecting a record number of spring break travelers this year, so they want to remind passengers of the rules when traveling with firearms. In the past three weeks, TSA agents at the Spokane International Airport say they have discovered nine loaded firearms and carry on luggage at security checkpoints. Agents say they found the loaded guns during routine x-ray screenings. In each of the nine cases, the person with that gun in their carry on was cited. Now, to be clear, you can take firearms on commercial flights, but not in your carry on, and you must follow a strict set of rules. Our Amanda Rowley will have more on the gun seizure numbers from TSA, and she'll have a reminder of those rules coming up new at 5 tonight. Back to you guys. Wow.